Welcome to episode 5 of the Project Mods writing blog series. In this, I'm basically trying to finish my Dark Academia adult fantasy book, which we're calling Project Mods because there's a lot of bugs in it, before March 1st. And then after that, I'm going to revise it, prepare it for querying, and go ahead and query it to literary agents? Question mark? You can find a more specific blurb for this project in the description, but I've also talked about it at length in various videos, including pretty much every episode of this series. And I feel like most of you guys, if you're here on episode 5, you pretty much know the drill by now. So I actually filmed a completely different intro for this week's vlog. I was going to do just a standard vlog where, I don't know, I just tried to finish act four, but I get bored very easily. I think it's kind of weird because I actually really enjoy watching writing vlogs that are just sort of routine or realistic, you know, day in my life. But for me personally, I need to mix it up once in a while, so that's what we're doing today. It's also kind of been a minute since I've done an unhinged writing challenge like this. Let's go back to my roots. So to catch you up, this weekend is a three-day weekend. I have Monday off, which is fantastic because honestly, I'm feeling so burned out. We're approaching the end of the semester and my students are just like losing it and I'm losing it. And I actually just came off a trip. So while I would normally probably go on a trip during a three-day weekend like this, I'm pretty tired and I kind of need a break. And by break, I mean I'm going to spend Saturday, Sunday, and Monday trying to write 10,000 words in mods. Currently this draft is sitting at around 60,000 words, which I just hit 60,000 yesterday. And I feel like that's pretty good. If I pushed a little harder at a more normal pace, like if I wrote 2,000 words one day somewhere along the line or 1,500 every once in a while, I could still very much hit that March 1st goal very comfortably. But because I took that vacation and I had like nine days of not writing, I've fallen behind on my fake and not so fake goal of about a thousand words a day. And unfortunately, I found that once I broke the seal on that writing goal, it kind kind of was hard to pick myself back up again. So in short, I figured three day weekend, 10,000 word challenge, hopefully it'll get me back on my feet and back on track if it doesn't burn me out too much. In terms of the actual writing itself, I've been drafting pretty regularly since I got back. I'm still very much on act four, but I managed to unstick myself. On Wednesday of this week, I sat down and I just sort of reviewed everything I'd put into act four. And then I charted out and sort of re-outlined the remaining chapters in that act. And honestly, I didn't really even change that much. It was just a couple of little tweaks to make the flow of events and the consequences of things make sense and feel more real and present and immediate. If you're stuck on a particular act or if you can't get past a certain conflict, I really recommend just sort of like re-outlining just a little bit. I think it definitely helps in general to just take a step back and sort of have a big picture view of what you've been working on and remember where you're going and where you've been and all that good stuff. I also went back and revised acts one and two and then I went ahead and sent those acts to three trusted readers and I'm sort of getting their feedback like trickling in. Honestly, those first two acts are pretty polished. I kind of just sent them out to like get not validation in terms of positive feedback, but validation that the book is real and I am not just hallucinating the entire thing. Whatever feedback I get on those acts will go into the revisions process, but I'm obviously not going to start revising them heavily yet. Priority is going to be reaching the end of the draft, but I feel good this week. I feel like I found my footing in act four. I feel like I see the light at the end of the tunnel again. Um, all of that self doubt, well, not all of it, but most of my self doubt has sort of gone away. Um, I'm still feeling kind of insecure about the quality of the book, but I feel like I can definitely finish this draft in the upcoming weeks. Oh, I also started writing a short story about a particular side character. That was a really helpful world building exercise. But again, at the end of the day, the thing that got me unstuck was re-outlining those chapters. Okay, so yeah, basically I have an outline. I have a goal. I know what I'm doing now and I'm gonna go ahead and do it. It's around 5.30. I'm just gonna go out and enjoy my Friday because tomorrow morning we are going to start and we are going to get serious and try to write 10,000 words so that's going to be roughly like 3,500, 3,300 words a day. I think that should be pretty doable because I have nothing else going on. Although sometimes the days in which I have nothing else going on are not as productive for writing as opposed to days in which I'm teaching back-to-back -back classes. I taught three two-hour classes today and I still managed to write a thousand words. So who knows? The ADHD brain works in very mysterious ways. But yeah, we'll see what happens and I will catch you guys first thing tomorrow morning. Bye!
Okay, I paused for a quick dinner and I just wanna show you guys what I did. I have this cheap electric kettle and I made pasta inside. It actually cooked really well and like super quickly. And then I had some jarred pesto and I have made myself some pesto pasta because it's one of those nights. Women in STEM. Okay. I am stopping writing for the day because I have to. Technically, it's about to be Sunday in one minute. I am usually not someone who stays up this late like writing. So today, I actually was going to film more. Like I really thought I was going to spend the whole day between cafes and trying to hit that 3,333 word mark. But then I woke up to some like, I don't know. Um, I got, I woke up to some news. It's not writing related. It has to do with my grad school applications. And so I just spend the whole day sort of like literally talking to everyone I knew, trying to get like second, third, fourth, fifth opinions, trying to make this like major life decision for myself. And so not a lot of writing got done in the first half of today, but you know what? That's life, I guess. You know, I'm always like, it's okay if stuff gets in the way. And sometimes life just gets in the way of writing and you can't always prioritize writing. The thing is, I just wish it hadn't been today because I'm doing this writing challenge and obviously there's like a lot to get done and I wanna make this video and I want it to be good. After spending the whole day, one, counseling everyone I know, two, trying to figure out the decision for myself, three, comforting myself because I was feeling kind of overwhelmed. At around like eight o'clock, I finally got my stuff together. The footage you just saw was me going to the laundromat and just doing like a big load of laundry. House chores definitely helped me clear my head. And while the laundry was going like that whole hour, I was just sitting and writing. And then I came back and I sat and write some more. So I've actually managed to finish out today with 2,000 words, which is technically not my word count goal, but I think now that the dilemma is mostly resolved, I can probably focus a lot more tomorrow. I'm gonna try to go to bed very soon so I get like a decent amount of sleep. Sorry, I'm literally all over the place today, but today's Saturday, February 11th. Tomorrow is Sunday, and then I'll have Monday after that to sort of make up for what I've lost, which is, I'm only a thousand words behind technically, so it's not too bad. I managed to pull it together in the end. I will say that like usual, every time I do a word count challenge, the quality of the words that I put out is just not as good, but that is okay because that is not the goal of this weekend. The goal of this weekend is to just put in 10,000 words. I have the story, like the actual content is going to be relatively solid because you know, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out the knots that were happening in act four specifically. I've actually written some cool creepy scenes in this segment that I'm really proud of. So the writing's not all bad, but it's obviously just not as polished as it would be if I weren't, you know, crunched for time or making myself crunched for time, which is a more accurate assessment of what's happening right now. But overall, so far, I feel pretty good about this challenge. I kind of don't know if I'm gonna hit 10,000 words. Again, I also think that like being in sort of a weird headspace in other areas of my life, that's also going to affect the quality and consistency of my writing. So that's kind of thrown a wrench in everything. That's just a forewarning, but I'm still gonna give it an honest shot and we're still going to try to get through with this challenge. With these challenges in general, I mostly do them for YouTube. I would never really do these for myself. The write a novel or 50,000 words in 24 hours was like actually unhinged. Most of the time when I'm doing these like word count challenges or writing challenges, I'm usually like, I'm just gonna write as much as I can and not actually hit the word count. It's just one of those things where for me personally and my process, I'm just not a very fast writer. And I, I can be, but again, like the quality is not gonna be the same. I'm gonna have to do a lot more revisions, probably more structural changes because I've been jumping around just to hit that word count goal. And I like to go back and like read things and stuff. And I think personally, I know people say not to do that. This is why I say prescriptivist writing advice is for the birds. I've at this point accepted that going back and reading what I've written and revising as I go is actually like really helpful for me because it, helps with my bad memory. As long as I'm not wasting too much time on the tiny minutia of revisions and like doing copy edits for 15 minutes and writing for five minutes, it's helpful for me to sort of like catch up with myself and to go back and to look at what I've been writing and to see what sort of like setup or breadcrumbs I've left for myself. One of the things that really helped me get back into shape with this drafting process was going back and reading X1 and 2, even though it was for the purpose of sending it to other people. It was definitely helpful. I'm sorry, I feel like this might be like a little bit more boring because it's going to be so much like, I wrote X amount of words in this amount of time, let's go on to the next thing. And it's gonna be a little bit less like analysis because honestly, I'm thinking a lot less. <laughs> what can I say? I'm writing sort of the tail end of act four, which culminates in Lark, the main character, having a really major realization because something horrible happens, which is basically 
basically like the book is a series of realizations after something horrible happens, but also so is life and specifically so is academia. But I've decided to put like a little bit more joy into Act 5. I won't get into specifics, but more like positive character interactions because Act 4 has almost none. It's really like a down point in Lark's life, so she only has the worst people in the world in her life. It's not a very uplifting act, so I think kind of stepping back into a slightly more upbeat tone. I mean, this book never gets very positive or shiny, happy fantasy. Like, it's a pretty depressing book. It deals with some really heavy topics. I think, like, kind of easing back into that will help the ending maybe feel more satisfying. I don't know. Tone is a really interesting thing. Tone when you're writing something that is supposed to be darker, but you don't want it to be so heavy that it's off-putting. I really struggle to engage with media that's just like so heavy all the time. My favorite media has an unexpected level of balance. Like I like a sitcom that tends to be sad or has like sad arcs. I like heavy dramas that tend to be like a little funny, silly, goofy. Like I love Breaking Bad because sometimes that show is straight up just like a funny, silly, goofy time. So media like that, where there's just a little bit more of a tone balance is what I prefer over the really just constant misery, dark and heavy stuff. And I think that's also in line with most people, but really it's in line with me and my taste. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for with this book where it deals with a lot of like heavy shit and you're not gonna be super happy while you're reading most of the time, but it's gonna balance itself out a little bit. Anyway, yeah, that's my thoughts on tone. That is today's update, Saturday update. So I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Hopefully I can catch up. I think if I write like 3,500, 30, set, like a little bit under 4,000 words, I'll be in good shape. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now. Hi, it's Monday, it's February 12th, it's around three o'clock in the afternoon. Today I wanted to do a little bit of a midday update followed by a more casual end of the day update and then I'm going to do sort of like overall wrap up of the weekend. So this should still be a relatively meaty video even though it's only been filmed over the course of three days. It has been such a bum weekend, but today was a little bit better. I actually woke up at a reasonable hour. Turns out I technically did not have the day off. We're not gonna think about that. <laughs> because I just didn't go. They were doing some sort of school activity until 10 that no one told us about. And then all the classes after 10 were supposed to resume as normal. I didn't have any classes after 10, so I just didn't go. So sort of an unsanctioned day off. I still used it productively today. I woke up, I went to the cafe. I'm still very much behind. Yesterday I rounded out the day with 1100 words in. So that means I had 3,150 words over the course of those two days, Friday and Saturday. And then this morning I managed to get 1300 words in. So that brings us to around 4,500 words roughly, which is less than half of what I wanted to achieve during this weekend. The news that I got on Friday just, it wasn't even bad news, but it just sort of, threw everything off. So it was kind of the worst time to get that. Not to make excuses or anything, just saying that I was not at the top of my game and maybe I wouldn't have been able to fulfill 10,000 words in a three day weekend otherwise, but I'm still very pleased with myself for getting even this amount of words done. And I do feel like I have made significant progress in this book over the past couple of days. I've definitely unstuck myself, which brings us to today. As I mentioned, I added around 1300 words to this draft. So it's not technically complete. There's an interlude at the end of each act. So I'm working on the interlude for the end of act four, but all in all, I have finished writing act four of this book and I am starting to dip my toes into act five. I think I'm definitely going to have to go back to act three and then act four, maybe over the next couple of days, or maybe I'll just go right into act five so I have a complete draft. But I do think that the sequence of events is a little out of line still in these later acts. I think one and two sets up some stuff that doesn't get paid off. So I just need to go back, you know, and take a look. And maybe that will help me construct uh, an act five that doesn't need to be ripped apart part later. All in all, like if you're just looking at the hard numbers and the hard words, I am almost done with this book that I've been working on for three years and that is so unhinged. <laughs> 
it's so wild. I'm going to try to get a couple more words done today, but I want to talk a little bit about what I've been writing in this act. So with a five act structure, which maybe I should have talked a little bit more about my approach to this. Basically what you're looking at is a first act that's like exposition, a second act that's rising action, a third act that's sort of the mid point peak climax and then fourth act is falling action and fifth act is resolution that is straight off the internet i didn't really follow that first act is yes a lot of exposition it builds up to basically the inciting incident i mean this is already in the pitch so the end of act one is the murder occurring and then act two is sort of dealing with the fallout of that and at the end of act two something else that is bad happens like the antagonist enters the scene somewhere in act two act three is like main brunt of the conflict between the antagonist and the main character and the main character having to deal with the antagonist being in her life and act four is when they become permanently entangled like i mentioned before act four is very very psychologically focused it's a lot of focus on how this character lark is reacting and then act five we're going into the resolution of the storyline i think the ending and sticking the landing on the ending is super duper important that's not always my strongest suit i'm not gonna lie i think that i write a really compelling beginning like that's sort of one of my things is i can really hook people in most of the time but because of the way that my mind works because it's non-linear sometimes i just feel like i don't pull it all together compellingly and it takes a lot of tinkering with the story typically for me to be able to accomplish that effectively especially as different subplots and plot threads change throughout the drafting and writing process of the story there's just sort of a lot of different elements at play here that makes this really challenging but it's challenging in a fun and interesting way i don't know i'm trying not to overthink it i think i have a good plan for act five and for the end of this book i think the final image especially is like really powerful and the culmination of the character's arc and where she ends up at the end of all this like it makes sense in a way that i hope isn't too predictable it's to me a very satisfying ending but there's every other character's ending and then there's the culmination of the conflict it's a lot but i do have high hopes for this and i feel like i have enough of an idea of how act five is supposed to play out to make drafting relatively straightforward and then it'll just be a matter of stepping back and seeing revisions as a whole and ah i need to make a revisions plan but honestly i have been slightly unfaithful i've mentioned this project before but there's this gothic romanticy about necromancers spaced loosely off of like renaissance venice but also with a mishmash of other cultures and time periods to make like a secondary fantasy world that I have not been able to let go of. I just keep like daydreaming about it. I'm very much in that stage where I'm able to daydream about the characters and the world and the plot and all the ideas are bubbling up and I haven't had to pick them apart and see what works and what won't work and like turn it into an actual story structure yet. And I'm just having fun with it. And that actually brings us to today's sponsor, Milanote. I'm super excited to be working with them. They are an aesthetic organizational tool. This is perfect for writers, for any other type of creative. It's a very, very visual system as well which I really like. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I've been using Mila Note to organize two projects, Moths and the Gothic Romanticy that I just mentioned. So I'm just gonna take you through my boards. Here is my beautiful homepage where I've organized boards for all of my various projects and let's go right into Project Moths over here under Novels. So I have this really nice landing page that I put together. Since Moths isn't really in the planning stages right now, I'm mostly going to use this to track the revising and querying process once I get to that point. And now let's go ahead and take a look at an actual work in progress. Project Crips is the gothic romanticy. It's in the brainstorming stage, so I've also made a little landing page here with the pitch, a to-do list, some visuals. This has been really useful for curating the tone. Already we can see we've got a dark, gothic, but very lush, romantic energy. I've also made boards for characters, so I'm just going to show you the main character here. I put in inspiration, some colors. I love the color swatch feature in Mila Note. It's so cute. And then some more visual inspiration. One feature feature that I really want to highlight in Milano is the to-do list function. I'm such a big fan of using to-do lists as part of the planning and writing process. I find that outlines are the best for me as to-do lists. So I have started to make this very early stages, by the way, outline. If you're someone who struggles to stay on task with a plotted novel, then I really recommend this. Milano is available for free, and I do have a link in the description box below if you want to try it out today to organize or brainstorm your whip. So thank you so much to Mila Note for sponsoring this video and I hope you guys check it out. But yeah, I, I'm super glad I got to show you guys that because I actually made these boards a while ago in anticipation of this collaboration and I've just been revisiting them a lot lately because one, I mean, I, t I made them super pretty. Like they're so cute. And two, this project has just been eating my brain. Moths does have a romantic element to it. Like there's a romance subplot between two characters, but it's not super, it's not, 
it's not at the forefront. Like most of uh, Lark's character development sort of happens on her own. It is like a book with spice in it. It does focus a lot on like how her relationships with other people affect her, but the romance that she develops throughout the book isn't like the main focus at any point. It's very much like a subplot D or C. So I think my little romantic heart has just been craving a romance and I've been wanting to write this really like juicy, spectacular, sweeping, epic romance. One of those romances where like the fate of the world very much rests on these two people and their relationship that's a little bit messy. Like something that feels big and grand and epic. And I think that will be Project Crips. As you can probably tell, I'm really excited to start it, but of course I have to go ahead and finish the draft of Moths first. All I can do for now is just sort of daydream and brainstorm and look at Pinterest. So I still have a good amount of the day left. I have plans in a little bit probably to do some activities and get dinner but for now i think i'm just gonna write a little bit more and see how far i get i'll give you guys a like an iphone you know one of the updates where the colored light is in my face instead of behind me i love how freaking honest i am for no reason i will do one of those at the end of the day just to catch you guys up on my word count and how i'm feeling about everything but really we're in the last leg and that is so weird i i think i will like almost definitely finish this book before I leave because act five is pretty short. Big parts of it have already been written. I don't know, it feels so surreal and strange. Like I've been working on this book for such a long time. I shouldn't get ahead of myself. You know, something could still happen where I just completely lose interest or realize that everything I've written has been a huge pile of crap. Hopefully not and hopefully I'll be done within the next couple weeks. So, okay, great. I will catch you guys in a little bit when I update you again. It's currently Tuesday, February 13th, which means we are officially done with the 10,000 word three day weekend challenge. Last night I was planning on filming a little update at the end of the day, but I actually didn't because I ended up not writing at all after that sort of like middle of the day burst which I think is usually how it goes. I either write a lot in the morning or I write a lot in the evening. I can't do both in one day. It just kind of drains me too much. I mean, it was kind of a bummer, but I ended up having a really nice evening with my friend. We watched a movie. We watched May, December, which I don't know if I enjoyed it. I don't know if I could recommend it to anyone in good conscience because it's like legitimately a traumatizing film. But anyway, you know, sometimes you just need that. You need to have dinner with your friend and watch a movie and not worry about writing 10,000 words in a day. So honestly, I just don't even feel that guilty or anything about not winning this challenge. I ended up writing 4,500 words more or less over the three days, which is like a very significant amount. That's more than I'd been writing. Um, it's more than, you know, my daily word count would have allowed. Basically, I just wrote like 1,500 words extra. And given the fact that like a lot of stuff happened at the very beginning, that was unrelated and kind of threw me off my groove, just, Given the fact that other stuff was going on in my life, I just can't really fault myself. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little too forgiving on myself these days. But there was a time where I genuinely probably would have been kind of upset that I didn't win this fake challenge that I put out for myself. As for today, I was also able to write in between classes. I think I've mentioned this before, but Tuesday with my current class schedule is relatively busy. I only have like random 50 minute breaks in between, but I still managed to write quite a bit. We are getting down to the tail end of the semester, so I just have a lot less like prep work to do and not much going on in class either, honestly. So today I managed to get my daily 1,000 words in for moths. I actually went a little over, so I have 1,100 words in at the moment. Probably not gonna touch that anymore for today. I also actually put 500 words just today into a comedic horror short that I've been picking at for a little while. It's kind of interesting. Um, I don't really know if I'm gonna do anything with it, but it's it's funny, it's dark humor, um, but in a very much like teenage girl who hates all her friends and very much has disordered eating but doesn't realize it kind of way. And it's also horror, so it's kind of a fun one if you're into that sort of thing. I do hesitate because for me, my instinct 
and my tendency when I'm talking about something as serious as disordered eating. That's one topic that I feel comfortable approaching with humor. I know not everyone is down for that. And I don't want people to think that I don't take that seriously or think that it's a joke or anything. That's just how I've dealt with it in my life. But yeah, it's one of those things where it's very much like my voice shining through and my sense of humor and my sensibilities. And I'm like, I don't know if other people really get this or agree with it or maybe think that it's not okay to write like this. So it's one of those where I'm like hesitant but also at the same time I don't want to censor myself in any way. I want to just like write the story that is very much in line with like the teenage girlhood that I had and a lot of people had with a horror twist and just have it be out there and be funny. So maybe some audiences will respond to it, I don't know. I think it's just one of those where it's like a tough sell, not just in the sense that selling it to someone for money would be tough, but selling it to an audience to sort of like accept it as it is. And on top of that, which is like 1600 words of writing, not too shabby, I also managed to outline a little bit of my gothic romanticy and start to tinker with the outline of Act 5 of Moths. I'm gonna loop back to the gothic romanticy. I cannot express how much that project has been just devouring my brain cells. Honestly, I'm 85 to 90% sure that this will be the project that I pursue after Moths. I would have to really like work on the outline first, I think, because that's sort of what I've landed on as a writer is that I need to work on the outline and make sure it's really solid and has a really good direction. Otherwise, I waste a lot of time. But I'm just so drawn to the world, the characters. I keep getting these little like sparks of inspiration inspiration throughout the day. It's almost like the thing I described in my last video where I feel passion for this, but it's also just like, it's not so much that passionate obsession, it's like this inspiration. It just won't stop coming at me. So I feel very inspired to write that project and I'm really excited to tackle it next. So overall today was a pretty good writing day, not gonna lie, um, which is pretty impressive given that I have not been sleeping well. However, as I'm pushing into Act 5 of Mods, I'm, as I mentioned, starting to realize the need to re-outline as I did with Act 4. That was really helpful. I think that little outline like really helped me push through even though I ended up not following it to the letter actually. That's my problem is I'll outline and outline and then I just won't listen to myself. But usually when I don't listen to myself, it's for a reason and it's better than what the outline set out to say. And I think that when you're drafting based off of an outline, you have to allow yourself a little bit of flexibility because at the end of the day, an outline and the actual narrative are gonna be two very different beasts. And you might find that the pacing needs are a little bit different when you're actually drafting the story as opposed to when it was just like bullet points or a list. And that's usually where it boils down to me, like the pacing always feels different than how I anticipated it to feel when I'm outlining, if that makes sense. Anyway, yes, re-outlining act five. It's so weird because I know exactly what image this ends on and I know where all the points converge, but it's sort of that convergence that's like getting to me because it's tricky, you know, I really want to stick the landing, as I've mentioned. I want this to have a good, memorable, and most importantly, like satisfying ending in terms of the characters and the themes and the story itself, the conflict. Right now, I'm struggling to sort of convince myself that the conclusion to the external conflict is what it is or should be what it is because it's almost like a punchy conflict which doesn't work for this type of story but I kind of don't know what else to do so I think I might just end up writing that sort of borderline punchy conflict and then see if it works and then sort of tweak it to make it less punchy to like pull it back from that maybe and then beyond that there's a lot more internal conflict stuff and a bunch of primary and secondary characters have arcs that need to be tied up. There's one character where like she's kind of missing right now and I don't fully know how to bring her back into the story so there's not that many characters in this book and there's not that many characters who are relevant because it is very much a story that's character centralized on one person and that person is Lark and then the other person arguably is the antagonist. So when you get down to it there's really only two characters that really really matter but that doesn't mean that the secondary characters don't matter. All those loose ends being tied up is gonna take a while. I don't want anything to feel bloated or rushed. I don't want it to feel like the ending is cheap or unearned. I feel like it could be so, so excellent if I just stick the landing on this ending. But in order to do that, I definitely need to take my time to figure things out, which is not my strong suit, especially when I'm so close to the end. I'm one of those people that will rush to the end. I think that's why my endings usually don't hold as much weight as I'd like because I see the like, the finish line and I'm just sprinting. I just want to be done. Anyway, to sum up this past couple days, 
No, I did not hit 10,000 words in three days. That's okay, I did 4,500 and I feel pretty good about it. I am very close to the end point of this book, which is super exciting, but also like nauseating almost. I am concerned about the stability and strength of the latter acts, especially acts four and five, but I think that it's all very fixable. Like whatever sins I commit, in those acts. I can fix them before anyone ever sees them and it'll be okay. Okay, before I log off, a couple of bits of news. Um, so I am moving again. I'm uprooting my life and changing the plot for the plot at the end of this month. So I'm going to pair back to sort of like a once every two week schedule for the next couple months. The other part of that is I'm moving states once I'm back in the states, like within a month I'm gone again. Basically that means it's gonna be a little bit busy and hectic in my personal life. So I'm going to upload a little bit less. I'm obviously still going to do these vlog updates, but but a lot of the other videos are probably going to be like the sit down craft and writing chat videos that I can record well in advance and then just sort of put out. And that comes hand in hand with the news that the writing retreat, my podcast, is going to go on a brief hiatus. I'm hoping to restart it once I'm back in the States, but because my living situation is going to change at the end of March, I feel weird bringing it back for like a month only to go on indefinite hiatus again. So I might just wait until I have my permanent residence. That is all to say that if you reached out to be a guest, I haven't forgotten you. I have a list. It's very meticulous. And I will reach out to you once I get the roster started again and once I start going down the list again. Huge shout out to everyone who has reached out to be a guest on that podcast and again if you're a writer or a writing content creator or you'd probably be both but you know if you want to talk on the podcast let me know i will add you to the list and we will be on it just not anytime soon i am so sorry from now on that podcast is probably going to be guest only so i'm not going to do the solo episodes anymore they don't do that well it also just feels like i'm doing a long form version of my writing chat craft of my writing craft chats. So it feels a little bit unnecessary and, you know, egregious. The other reason that I'm putting the writing retreat on hiatus now instead of when I move is because apparently my landlady keeps unplugging the Wi-Fi router or I had a really unstable connection consistently in my last episode with Chris. Anyway, that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you as always for coming along on my writing journey and for being so supportive and interested in mods. This is the most consistent I've been with my writing in such a long time and it really is because of these vlogs. I cannot wait to finish this book. I really can't. And I also can't wait to start querying mods to agents because however it turns out, you know, when I started this channel, I I already had an agent and now I feel like after having gone through two agents and now being on my own I left my last agent I just have so much more knowledge than I did before and I feel like I can go through this process and be really informative and it'll feel like I'm less alone as well yeah I don't know I'm just so grateful to like have you guys with me as I'm doing that thank you so much for watching I will see you guys next time stay safe eat your vegetables <sighs> what am I doing I think I'm losing my mind bye